I don't want any more options. I don't want any more options. Just me. I don't want any more options. I don't want any more freedom. I don't want freedom. That's another one, man. Like, freedom is a freaking illusion. I want to be a slave. I want to be a slave to what's right. I want to shut my brain to everything else. I want to close myself off. And I want to be one. One track minded. That's the power that's available to men when we're not effeminate. Yo, Elliot. About that. Yo, Elliot, following your thou shalt read commandment, I have had a strong desire to incorporate religion into my life. I believe in God and I wear a cross around my neck, but I just don't know how I can introduce religion naturally into my life. I've tried in the past and it just felt forced. My Polish ancestors were Roman Catholic, but religion has never been present in my family growing up. I find myself intrigued by the work of Emmett Fox with his interpretation of the Sermon on the Mount, but I'm also very intrigued by Taoism. This is a mess of a question, but any advice would be appreciated. So, as you know, I've been around the block, right? I'm like religious promiscuous, promiscuous in the religious sense, you know, and I've kind of like dabbled in and have been intrigued by many different religions. And I, I sense that this, this seeking is for, is natural, is normal. I think men have always uh, sought in this particular way, sought God, sought the higher power. In fact, I just listened to an audiobook, and the author said that all men, all people throughout all of history, if you take all of the people throughout all of recorded history, uh, 99% of all people all throughout history have believed in, sought for, and worshipped a God, God in some way, shape, or form, just God in general, right? Um, and it was interesting because he was saying that this whole idea that, that you know, we can live a life without God is, is actually fairly new, and it's, and it's a very small percentage of people, but it's growing uh, in our, you know, I guess what you could say as, you know, we become more uh, degenerate as a culture, right? And so if you consider that if, if, if you're that 1% of all people that have ever lived and you think you're right, he was, his whole point was that that's quite arrogant, <laughs> right? So you know, so of all the people who've ever lived, you know the truth as that 1% of all people that ever lived, right? So I think it's, and the point he was making as well is that it's, it's natural for us. It's natural for us to want union with the creator, right? We know as human beings, it's like imprinted on us that there's something bigger. There's something more. There's something omnipresent. There's something uh, omnipotent. And there's something beyond time, before time. And space, right? Like even scientists, right? If you consider science as a means by which we try to understand the emanations of God, right? Science, God created science. In fact, science came out of the Catholic Church. I learned that too. That's where the first scientists came from. First universities came from. All came from the Catholic Church. Um, so science is Catholic. Um, it, there, it's trying to uh, understand God through his emanations, through nature, right? It's like nature can kind of, can, can point us somehow to the laws of the omnipotent. And so it's normal, it's natural, but it's confusing, especially today where there are so many options, right? Like our, our grandparents, like you say, your grandparents, your Polish ancestors were Roman Catholic. Well, they were Roman Catholic because there was no other choice for them practically, probably. There probably was not very many choices. They probably didn't hear about Taoism, right? <laughs> right? They grew up in, they were Polish. You know, you say your ancestors, maybe like your grandparents or great-grandparents. Guaranteed they never heard of Taoism. Guaranteed they never heard of Hinduism, probably, or uh, Confucianism, or what's really like the, the, the religion of today or, you know, what 
passes as religion for today, which is new age paganism. It's sort of a, it's sort of a blend between pagan and new age. It's like a new age pagan, right? You know, and so you you got a lot of that going on. The point is that there's a lot of options, and then you start wondering like, well, there's who's right, and where do I go, and who do I believe, and what's wrong, and you can do as I've done which is, you know, read a lot of the writings, old writings, scriptures, right? Um, study the history of all these things. But then what, what started to become interesting to me is not only, you know, I, I, my, my mind started getting smaller, I started getting more of a closed mind, right? You know, everybody says have an open mind. You should have an open mind. But having an open mind, just for my, in my experience, started to create more chaos in my life. Having an open mind meant that there was too much. There was just too much. And I couldn't, I, I no longer was able to discern. I couldn't sort what was good from what was bad, what was right from what was wrong. I basically, you know, the way the secular world uh, trains us is to believe that everything is subjective, that there's no objective truth, right? It's what do you feel about it? What is, what is your truth? And that is, that, not only is that chaos, that's pure chaos, and chaos is the, is the, is the way of Satan, but it then also makes us into our own gods, and I'm not fit to be a God, <laughs> right? I'm not fit to be a God. I made in the likeness and image, and I have the potential for what the Orthodox call deification, right? I can raise myself up, but I'm not the creator. But, you know, when, we, when we're subjective and, and our feelings and our thoughts become our truth, then we become our own gods. So as... I started to close my mind. I started becoming narrow-minded. And, it, and, it's a, it, and it's a good thing for me, right? Because I've had an open mind, wide open, like a big old vagina, taking it all in. Like I said, I was a religious slut. I'll just take it all in, take it in. As that chaos of taking it all in, you know, just like a woman, they say if she's too promiscuous and she takes in too many men, like she starts to get chaotic on the inside. Right. You know, there's, there's science that shows this. Too many sex partners throws her rhythm off. And she's just like, you know, kind of like a wild, crazy woman. They say that even she takes on the spirits of, of the various men that she's been with. And so a lot of guys who have been with like super promiscuous women and then try to wife them are like, oh, she just flipped out all of a sudden and like started having this weird personality. And it's like, well, that's one of her spirits that she took in. So I did that. I was a slut. I was a I was a I was a religious slut. And I took on all these spirits and then I got, and then I had the epiphany phase, right? Like women had the epiphany phase. I realized I can't go on like this. I can't go on like this. I need to settle down. <laughs> this is just my experience. And I'm just sharing my experience because maybe it'll be of value to you. Maybe you at some point will see the way I see, meaning like you'll get to my point. You'll be like, wow, okay. Now I understand what Elliot was talking about. It may not be available to you yet. And that's okay. So I started to close my mind and, and what I started to do is cut things out of my life. I really, the, the, when I became around like 38, 39 years old, I just needed to get shit out of my life. I needed to simplify. Really, that's what it boiled down to. It was like there was just way too much available. And, you know, through the Internet, like I said, your grandparents didn't know about this shit. But we have access to everything because of the Internet. And it seems empowering, but it's also disorienting and I started to realize just how disoriented I was because of so, all this information and so I started to just boil things down to the to, to what is actually present right what is actually not where I'd like to be or who I'd like to be or what I want to know what do I actually know and what is actually present right there's nothing more true than what is actually present all right well what is present well and, and this is, was just my mindset. And it doesn't mean that you have to take it this way. And a lot of this was conscious of me, but a lot of it was unconscious as well. I didn't know I was doing it. And I can look back in retrospect. But uh, I started looking at the fact that, well, 
I am an American man. I am American, right? And when it really boils down to it, I was born in America. I'm American. You could say African-American or Irish-American or Jewish-American. You can make up all this other stuff, but the fact is what's present, what's present is I'm American, I'm American. And working backwards, that means that I live in a Eurocentric culture, meaning it's, America is European, where it's a, it's a split off of Europe, right? My grandfather, my great-great-grandfather was actually English himself. I said he was a very arrogant man. He used to ride his horse, gallop his horse into the store. <laughs> I guess that's where I get it from. He's a very prideful and arrogant man. And he married a black woman, a tall black woman. Anyway, the point is that not only my heritage, which it, I don't even think that matters. Really, as an American, I, don't, I really don't even think if we're truly present with what, um, what we are as Americans, even our race doesn't matter. We should be able to transcend that, right? We're American. You're American. I don't care what color skin you have, right? I don't care where your parents came from. You're American, right? And I start, that made things easy for me, especially as a multi-race person, right? You know, not even, you know, my parents are from a different country and you know, I got multiple races in me. I need, there was too much chaos. That creates chaos. So even that consideration, chaos. I don't want that, right? I didn't, I, just, I didn't want to identify with that. I needed simple, American. Also, regardless how you want to look at it, American is European. Well, what's, what is European culture? European culture is Catholic. It's Catholic. It, if you could imagine the soil was ripe with Greek philosophy, and then the seed was Christian theology. And that's how the West was built. All the beautiful things in Western civilization come out of that soil and that seed. Like I said before, science comes from Catholic, the Catholic Church. Uh, um, universities come out of the Catholic Church. All the, like many of the technologies, I was astonished because I started I'm reading the history of the Catholic Church. Many of the technologies that allowed us to survive some of the most tumultuous times of our history, Middle Ages and stuff, technology came from monks. These, and you know, monks were like the first semen retainers. Monks were guys, and these guys were brilliant because why? They were, they were doing semen retention. Monks were guys that dedicated themselves to God and to the men in their, in their monastery. And so with that, they had nothing but ingenuity and they created all kinds of technology. And so anyway, um, in my religious pursuit, I stopped and I went, and just like I did with, in, in terms of like wanting to know the roots of Western culture, the, the roots of Elliot Hulse is Catholicism. I was, my parents were, you know, they're central, they're from Central America. My parents were Catholic. I was baptized Catholic. I went to CCD, but in the confusion of the world, I lost it. I lost it all. By the time I was in middle school, it was like, what the heck? I'm not doing this stuff. What, what is this about? My parents didn't really continue doing it. And in that, in that sense of chaos in my life, it was, a very, it was a very stabilizing force. And now, of course, I'm very biased towards Catholicism because now I see the most beautiful things in Western civilization came out of the Catholic Church. If you look at the most beautiful architecture, it's not Protestant. <laughs> it's not. The buildings are usually pretty bland. Look at the monasteries. Look at the look at the big beautiful churches, right? Technology, like I said, science, all these things. And so there's a grace there that's associated with the Catholic Church. Not only that, and so I'm not trying to sell you on anything here. I'm just telling you where I'm at. Beyond just the idea of religion, right? Which many Christian denominations offer you, right? Because you got the Bible, which offers you ideas, ideas. And, you, and, and, you know, of course there's prayer. But there are sacraments that are only available in the Catholic Church. And I need, I don't know about you, but I need, I need ritual. I need ritual in my life. 
And so if I wanted to be a part of a religion and I wanted it to be a, a, a Western religion, right? Because I'm a Western man, I'm an American man. And it's something that my ancestors grew through. Then I wanted to do those rituals. There was something just a little off with trying to do Taoist or Hindu or, uh, you know, other religion rituals. It, I, I felt like an imposter, right? I was like, there's something a little off here. And I don't want to denigrate those religions. I'm not trying to denigrate those religions at all. I can give you my opinion, but that's, that's not even the point here. Right? The point is that I wanted ritual. And the Catholic Church is rife with tradition. I also needed tradition. I want tradition and ritual. And the Catholic Church is rife with tradition and ritual. The sacraments are the rituals. So you have the sacrament of baptism, right? Which you can find in other churches as well. But then the sacrament of reconciliation, right? Not so when we today in our secular world have quote unquote problems, what we do is we go to the, uh, the, the, the psychic confessional rather than the spiritual confessional, right? We go to psychologists who maybe, you know, they'll, just repeat back to us what we said and tell us that it's okay, or they'll teach you and help you to blame your parents for what happened, or they can give you a pill, you know, or some therapy, you know, they can do these various things for you. Well, that that is a uh, that is a counterfeit of the sacrament of reconciliation. Sacrament of reconciliation is to reconcile yourself to God the Father through His Church. And so if there is sin in your life, right, you did mess up, you did make mistakes, you did, you know, go off the path, well, then you have this sacrament that brings you back into atonement with the Father, right? The sacrament of reconciliation, the sacrament of the Eucharist. We get to partake of the ritual, of very, of the very ritual that Christ created for us to be in communion with him. So we have communion. It's the, 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 the sacrament of, uh, of communion is available as a ritual in the Catholic Church. I wanted that ritual. I can go every day to receive and to be in communion with the body and blood of Jesus Christ by receiving him in my body, right? That's a ritual. So we get caught up in like, you know, you hear this word ritual and they think like, oh, like, you know, what do you, what do you put in your coffee, right? That's what they think in terms of ritual because we have no God. We become our own gods. Uh, or like, you know, we love these rituals that are, um, I'll tell you this as well. Part of why I like the Catholic faith is because it's humiliating. It's humiliating. And you know what? That's not something people like in our world because everybody's full of pride. Humiliating comes from the word humble. And I know I am such a prideful dude that I needed humility. And so when I worship in the Catholic faith, you get on your knees, you humble yourself, you pound your chest, you admit your sins, you, you lower yourself. As opposed to, you know, many religions, especially New Age religions, is about praising yourself, raising yourself up. I am a God. And these women, too, that get into the uh, New Age, rich, the New Age um, uh, uh, paganism, I am a goddess. They really think they're freaking goddesses because they got these, like, these, these dresses on and, a bunch, and some beads. I am a goddess. They're deluding themselves. It's totally delusional. And there's no humility there because... Rather than humiliation, the religion puffs them up with pride. And you know that a religion is, this is just telling you where I'm coming from, right? A you know a religion is false if it fills you with pride. Any religion that fills you with pride by giving you, by fulfilling your passions, by giving you what you want, rather than teaching you to walk in the way of the Lord, that's a fake religion. Because all the fallen angels had the, that are the, the the creators of these false religions they promise you great things christ promises you nothing but a cross and just me i'm just telling you me i need a cross i need something to bear something to carry something to struggle with and i just know for me 
when I sacrifice the way Christ did on the cross, that I'm letting go of ego. And it's, and it's not an intellectual thing, meaning like even like Buddhism. Buddhism is very intellectual, which is fine, which is cool. It's great to have that intellectual concept. I, there's this concept, it's, it's very conceptual. But with the, the sacraments and the rituals of the Catholic Church, there is the actual practice of humiliation. When I receive Christ in the Eucharist, I get on my knees. And this is the way it's done in traditional Catholic churches. That's why I do the traditional thing. I don't, I don't like the, the New Age ones, right? Which most Catholic churches, they've gone totally New Age. I get on my knees. I get on my knees, and you know how I receive the sacrament? Like this. You know how humiliating it is? <laughs> That's humiliation, getting on your knees and going like this. You're like a dog begging. But I need that because, because my ego is so prideful. And I recognize that that's what I needed. These sacraments so, and these rituals. And so the faith is actually very, is very present, right? It's not, it's, it can be conceptual, especially if you read like St. Thomas Aquinas and, you know, you study the lives of the saints and like St. Augustine and like there's, they're brilliant, brilliant, brilliant people. Like I told you, science came from church. But I needed something primal, practical and ritualistic and the church offers that so you your parents your grandparents were roman catholic bro that's who you are right i mean the world offers you a lot of options which is actually in my opinion and my experience chaos i don't want any more options i don't want any more options just me i don't want any more options i don't want any more freedom i don't want freedom that's another one, man. Like, freedom is a freaking illusion. I want to be a slave. I want to be a slave to what's right. I want to shut my brain to everything else. I want to close myself off. And I want to be one. One track minded. That's the power that's available to men when we're not effeminate. When we live in this effeminate world, it's about openness, like an open vagina. It's about be everything for everyone and it's all all right. That's chaos. A man buries a sword, carries a sword. And what is a sword? A sword is a point. A sword has to be straight to the point. Boom, this is it. And I'm willing to be wrong. That's what I'm telling you right now too. I told you about that before, before we, I started on this rant. I have conviction, but I might be wrong. But I don't care. I'm still going to go hard in whatever direction I need to go in. And for me, Roman Catholic Church was the right decision. Elliot, but what about all the other? I don't care about all the others. Elliot, but what about all the options? I don't want any more options. It's the same reason why I've been married to the same woman and with the same woman for all these years. Because once I got my thing, that's it. I don't want the other options. I don't want. I mean, I did with the with you know searching and seeking because I was hiding from myself. I'm done hiding from myself. And I'm just this. And I invite you to be just that. So that's it, man. Like, I can't tell you what to do because there is, like you said, you're intrigued. I can't tell you what to do. Go, go, go be intrigued. Go try it out. Go look into you have to. You have to. Right? You gotta go look into it. You gotta go check it out. But do not allow this fallen world, this antichrist world, to turn you away from where you really come from. You're a Polish, you're a Polish Roman Catholic, American man, <laughs> right? I think you live in America. I, still, I got like lunch in my teeth. Um, and there's nothing to be ashamed about with it. You know, you know that if 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 the media and the movies and the pop culture is against something, it's probably something that is right. If the media and the pop culture and the movies and the music is for something, you can probably guarantee that it's wrong. Look at what the world is promoting and look at what the world hates. The world promotes all, all I don't even, I'm not even gonna go down that route. I don't want to sound like I'm um, talking bad, but it ain't good stuff. 
But look at the, what the world promotes. Just look at what the world promotes. Look at what the world promotes and you know that there's a good chance you need to go the other way. And look at what the world hates. The world hates Christ. The world hates particularly, particularly the Catholic Church. Hate, especially a lot, of, a lot of Christians, right? I know a lot of you guys are here and people watch this. And they, I know you think I'm wrong. But the hate for Catholics is so strong. It doesn't go the other way around. You don't hear too many Catholics like calling, calling out Protestants, even though they're the, prote the protesting church. But it's strange, this like, you know, because I've spoken to very, you know, I have friends, Christian and stuff, and they name call and they say all kinds of things. Uh, you, can, you can rest assured that the more you're hated, because Christ even said it, he said, they're going to hate you. And the more you're hated, the more you're probably on the right track. So, you know, what's one of the most hated institutions on the face of the earth. And, you know, don't get me wrong. The church is in apostate. The church is as fallen as the American culture. Right. But I but I believe that it retains the graces of Christ because he created it. Um, the, the Catholic Church is hated, <laughs> so hated. And maybe it's the masochist in me. But I want to be a part of the group that's hated. I don't want to be a part of the group that's loved, that's liked. Because if the world loves it, it's wrong. Look at, if I think uh, uh, Sheen, um, Bishop Sheen, something Sheen, I forget his name. Look him up. Look up on Google, uh, Why Be Catholic by, uh, I got to look it up now. Why Be Catholic. I'm going to look it up for you right now. Sheen, Sheen, Archbishop Sheen, Archbishop Fulton Sheen. He wrote an article on why being Catholic. And it basically, in the article, if you find it, I'm not going to read it to you now because it's a little bit long. He basically, he basically says if it's, if it's, the, if it's hated, then I want to be a part of it because they hated Christ. If it's loved, that's not it. So that's it, man. That's just my that's my experience. That's my opinion on that. Like I said, doesn't mean that I, doesn't mean that I'm right. I believe I'm right. I know I'm right. But sometimes you got to figure out what's right for you. This is just I put this out there because maybe it's uh, you know maybe maybe my story and my opinion will motivate you to be what you are, which is Polish Roman Catholic. Hope that helps, dude. I'm done on this one. Yo, it's your bro Elliot Hulse here, and I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, you ought to know that it was a clip from one of my most recent sessions with my King Transformation students, where among other things, we get together about four or five hours a week, and we speak on things related to becoming kings in our lives. If that sounds like you, and you're interested in joining a like-minded group of men who are growing stronger every day, in every way, in this degenerate age, then it's real simple. Just follow me on Instagram and then DM me the word King, K-I-N-G. And me and my team will get back to you with the details to see if you qualify to join us. I hope to see you at our next meeting. Done.